All right, guys, let's go ahead and we are going to talk about how to calculate empirical formulas. Now, we're going to be working on page uh, 237. And the first problem we're going to work, we're going to work number 36. And it says, determine the empirical formula of a compound. And it says we're containing 63.50% silver, 8.25% nitrogen, and the remainder, of, the remainder is oxygen. So I need the percentage of oxygen, so the first thing I have to do is I have to calculate that. So I'm going to add the silver and the nitrogen together and then subtract that from 100. And we see that I'll get a percentage for oxygen of 28.25%. Okay, now our first step order of business when we're doing our empirical formulas is we have to um, go ahead and change them into grams. So we're dealing with silver we're dealing with nitrogen and we're dealing with oxygen and our percentages the changes in the grams all we have to do is just erase grams or erase percent and put grams so silver is going to be 63.50 grams nitrogen is going to be 8.25 grams and oxygen is going to be 28.25 grams now after we get it into grams, our next step that we're going to do is we're going to divide by the atomic mass on the periodic table. So we look on the periodic table and we see that silver is 107.87. We see that nitrogen is 14.01 and oxygen is 16.00. Okay, and I go ahead and I'm going to or divide those guys out and I'm going to get numbers of 0. 0.58867 for silver, 0 0.58887 for nitrogen, and 1.76562 for oxygen. Now, these are obviously grams per moles, okay? So what we're going to do is, next step is we have to figure out, well, which one of these is the smallest number? So looking at these, these guys, uh, silver and nitrogen, are basically almost the same thing. But the smaller one is definitely going to be silver. And we're going to divide each one of those by the smaller number. So we're going to divide it by 0 0.58867. And we have 0 0.58867. And we divide all of them by that number. And after we divide that out, what we're going to see, we're going to have for silver and nitrogen, we get something, obviously for silver, since we're dividing it by the same thing, we get 1. Now, for nitrogen, we're going to get 1.00 and something else with it. And obviously that rounds up to 1 because we need whole numbers here. But lastly, we see that we have oxygen. And oxygen is going to be 2.999. Now here on this one, Guys, you can round to the tenths place, and if that rounds up to a whole number, you're good. So we round it to the tenths place, and you see that it will round that up to a three for a whole number of three. So I know that my empirical formula, what this means is that I have one silver, I have one nitrogen, and I have three oxygens, which we would see that this empirical formula would be silver nitrate. All right, guys, we're going to stay on the same page, and we're just going to move down to number 37. And in the problem, it says, determine the empirical formula of a compound uh, found to contain 52.11% carbon, 13.14% hydrogen, and 34.75% oxygen. Now, what I'm going to do, first step, like always, we're dealing with uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, we're going to go ahead and change those percents into grams, and all we have to do to do that is just take our percentages, erase that, and put grams. So we have 52.11 grams, we have 13.14 grams, and we have 34.75 grams. Remember, we're going to take that, and we're going to divide them by the atomic masses on the periodic table, which will have... 12.01 for carbon, we have 1.01 for hydrogen, and we have 16.00 for oxygen. Now, once we divide them by their 
um, atomic mass on the periodic table, we see that we get 4.33888. We get 13.00990, and we get 2.17188. And we see that the smallest of these numbers is going to be oxygen, the 2.11 or 2.17188. So we're going to divide each one of these guys by the smallest number. We go ahead and we divide those guys out, and this is going to give us the amount of each one that we have. So we divide it out in the first one and we see that this is going to roughly come out to 1.997. We rounded it to the tenths place and we get two. On hydrogen we get 5.99 and again we rounded the tenths place and we get six. And then lastly on oxygen we see that it's divided by itself so it's just one. So this tells me that my empirical formula is going to be C2 H6, O. Now, guys, we're going to go ahead and move on to the molecular formulas. And this incorporates the empirical formulas, but also it has a little bit of addition to it. Remember that the empirical formulas are the most reduced formula. And the molecular formula can have um, multiples, meaning you can have uh, the ability in those to have like C2O4, which we could reduce that, but we keep it like that because it's the true and the actual formula, the molecular formula. Now we're going to be staying on page 237 and we're going to work number 38. And in the problem it says, what is the molecular formula of the molecule that has an empirical formula of, so it gives us the empirical formula, we have CH2O and a molar mass of 120.12 grams. So it gives us 120.12, and that's grams per mole, because it's molar mass. Now, what we see here is we have the empirical formula. We have the actual mass of the molecule. So what we have to do to figure out the molecular formula, first we're going to take our empirical formula, and we take our carbon and hydrogen, we're going to find out the mass of it. Okay, we're going to find out the empirical mass. So we have one carbon, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Multiplying those guys by their mass on the periodic table, which we see that that is going to be 12.01, 1.01, and 16.00. We add those guys up, and we see we'll get 12.01, 2.02, 16.00, for a total of, we see we get um, 30.03. Now, this is also grams per moles, and we see that this is the formula, the empirical formula, and the empirical mass. So that's the mass of the empirical formula. So what we do to figure out the multiplier that we need, we're going to take the actual mass, which is 120.12, and divide it by the empirical mass, which is 30.03. We divide that out, and we get, we get 4. Now, this is our multiplier. So we take this 4, and we're going to multiply it by the subscripts in the empirical formula, and we see that we get an answer, a final answer, of C4H8O4. And this would be our molecular formula. And guys, here's our last problem. We're still on page 237, and we are working number 39. It says a compound with a formula mass of 42.08 AMU. So it's giving us a formula mass. It's giving us the actual mass. So it's 42.08. Remember that formula mass and molar mass are the same, except for their unit. Now, it's found to be 85.64% carbon and 14.36% hydrogen by mass. And it asks us to find its molecular formula. Now, remember in the last, the previous problem, the two things that we had, we had the empirical formula and we had the um, 
molecular mass or the uh, molar mass of the molecular formula and we could work it out. Now here we don't. We just have what this is going to be our molecular mass. Okay, It's our formula mass. It's the true mass and it just gives us the percentages. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out well what is the empirical formula. So we see that we're dealing with carbon and hydrogen and we set it up and we know that we have 85.64% so we just change that to grams and then we have 14.36% of hydrogen we change that to grams and just get rid of the percent and put grams because we're assuming we have a 100 gram sample. Now we're going to go ahead and divide that by their atomic masses 12.01 and 1.01 which gives us numbers of we see that we have 7.13072 and we have 14.21782 Okay, we take those and remember to find it, we divide by the smaller number. So we're going to divide by 7.13072 on both of them. We divide that out and we see that we're going to end up with a 1 for carbon and a 2 for hydrogen, which this gives us the empirical formula. So we're going to have CH2 as our empirical formula. So now we have our empirical formula and we have our actual mass so we can go ahead and work it out and this is just like the previous problem so first we take and we figure out what is the mass of CH2 so we have carbon we have hydrogen one carbon two hydrogens multiply them by their atomic masses and add them together and we see that we will get a empirical mass of 14.03. So we take that, this is our empirical mass, this is our molecular mass, and we go ahead and we go 42.08 all divided by 14.03 and that gives us a multiplier of 3. So we take our empirical formula and we multiply the subscripts by 3 to give us a final molecular formula of C3H6.